Well, good evening, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Tuesday Night Healing School. Woo, 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 Yeah, glory be to God. Well, welcome to Healing School. I'm Pastor Raynard Sands, Pastor Be Like Jesus Ministry here in Kent, Washington, and I want to invite you uh, tonight to have your Bible, notebook, pen, pencil, something to take notes, and we're just going over the scripture, what the Word of God has to say about healing. We want you to know and we want to leave no doubt that it's God's will for you to be healed. Okay, I'm going to pray. Glory be to God. We're going to make our daily confession and then we're going to get into the word. Amen. And we teach for an hour. So when that clock goes off, one hour, we're done. So let's pray. So Father, right now in Jesus' name. First of all, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, because we believe this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I thank you, Father, for how you continue to bless us, watch over us, and protect us. And then, Father, I thank you for your word. I pray, Father, tonight that you give us ears to hear. Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone listening tonight have a hearing ear. And Father, they won't be just hearers of the Word of God, but doers of the Word of God. And then I pray, Father, and I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. And right now in Jesus' name, we bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, plan, strategy, and maneuver that will try to come to hinder this word, hinder your people, for we declare and we decree it shall not come to pass and it shall not be manifested in our lives. But, Father, we thank you that you come and you confirm, confirm your word with signs falling. We thank you, Father, for all of those that are tuning in tonight, those that will watch us late in the week, Father, and throughout the days, months, years to come. We believe they will get healed. You will confirm your word with healing. And, Father, we just love you and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. And amen. Okay. Now, look, before we make our daily confession, I need you to do this. I need you to hit that like button. Come on, hit the like button. Hit the share and subscribe. Please invite people. We want them to know it's God's will for them to be the healed. You know, right now we're living in some kind of crazy times, but I tell people this. All it is, all we're living in, the Bible is being fulfilled. So you and I, as believers and knowing Jesus, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be fearful. But I do know this, that Jesus is the healer. And if anyone that's sick, got pain, going through something terminal, I'm here to tell you, Jesus can heal you. He wants to heal you. Matter of fact, he already healed you. You just need to hear the word and know how to receive it to see your body made whole in Jesus name. OK, so please do that. Come on. We want people well. We want them healed. And God wants them well and healed. Amen. OK, so let's get our Bibles. Wave them in the air. Come on, like you really care. Let's make this confession together. Are you guys ready? Here we go. OK, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Well, come on. Somebody shout. Amen. Hallelujah. OK, what we've been doing lately, I've been gone. I was gone last week to the Southwest Believer Convention. And uh, whoa, what a good time we had. there. But uh, before I left, we've been studying uh, the healings that Jesus performed in the Bible. There's about 19 or 20 of them. Now, you may see different ones in different uh, Gospels, like in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Sometimes you might only see it in John, but sometimes you might see three different ones. The same thing happening, or they talking about it in three different books. But the one thing that's for sure is God must have 
wanted to emphasize or the Holy Spirit must wanted to emphasize these 19 or 20 healings that happened. So they must be valorant. They must be important for back then, now, and the time to come. I really believe that's why the Holy Spirit, because it's something for us to learn out of each one of them. And one of the things I want to uh, talk about tonight, we want to go back to the woman with the issue of blood. I just sense the spirit of God. There's so much more he wants to share with us on that because we want you to know that there are certain keys and principles that we must grab a hold of to see the, the healing be manifested in our lives. Let me say this before I go any farther. God has already provided everything we need for healing. Jesus already paid the price. Okay, it's just like salvation. Jesus has done everything he's going to do about your salvation and my salvation. Now, I want to ask you a question. What did you do to become a sinner? That's right. You did absolutely nothing. You came into earth as a sinner. You didn't even do nothing, but you were a sinner. You were born into sin. Now, I want to ask you this. What did you do to become righteous? Nothing. There's nothing you can do. Jesus was made sin for you and I that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So what happened? We're righteous because we're in Jesus. And when people can understand that, you can walk in, who, in the righteousness and you can walk in the proper place in who you are in Christ. The same thing with healing. None of you wanted and do, none of you grew up and said, oh, I want to be sick or I want to be crippled and all of that. There's an enemy. Now, what do you do to receive your healing? You, do, you just accept it. You accept it. It is nothing you and I can do. It's who we are in Christ. So healing has already been provided for us. But by faith, we got to get that healing from here to here, where it's manifested in our body. But healing is already there. And that's why we go over these scriptures. Sometimes people say to me, and I heard about me and others, what they call us faith preachers, faith healers. We're not the healer. Jesus is. They say, oh, you guys say I don't have enough faith. Well, I didn't believe. I didn't say that. Jesus did. So don't get under no condemnation. Jesus said it. Jesus said to his disciples when they couldn't cast the devil out of the young man, he said, because of your doubt and unbelief. He said, because of your lack of faith, oh, ye of little faith. I never said that. Jesus said that. So if Jesus said there was a lack of faith or a lack of unbelief, you don't have to get upset about it. That means it can grow. But it only grows which way? It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's in Romans 10, 17. So I got good news for you tonight. Your faith can grow. But you're going to have to feed your faith according to the word of God. And that's why we keep going over these scriptures. I told you we're going to give you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. Why? So that we can choke out all the doubt and unbelief in your life. And the only way we can do that. Is with the word of God. Okay, so now let's turn our Bibles over to Mark chapter 5. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Bible. Mark chapter 5. And let's look at verses 21 through 43. Now this is two parts. This is Jairus who come in and ask Jesus to heal his daughter. And then this is the lady with the issue of blood. But the one we want to... Uh, emphasized tonight is the lady with the issue of blood. So let's turn to Mark chapter 5 from the New King James. And let's look at verses 21 through 43. Okay, you ready? Let's read. It says, Now when Jesus has crossed over again by the boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. Now, it says Jesus again. That means he has done this before. He crossed over to the other side. This, ain't, this is not the first time. It says again. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by the boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, 
one of the rulers of the synagogue came. Now, I want you to underline that one of the rulers of the synagogue. That's going to be important in a minute. One of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and throned him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had. I want you to hear this. This lady spent everything that she had and was no better. She didn't get better, but rather grew worse. I want you to see that these are key points. She didn't, she spent everything she had. She didn't get better, but she grew worse. I mean, after all the money she spent with the doctors and everything, she got worse. Okay. Now look at verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, how did faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, listen to it, underline it. You can underline For she said, she said, she said. These are going to be key points. We're going to come back and highlight and illustrate tonight. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. That was a statement of faith. She was saying, if I do this, this is what's going to happen. That was her faith speaking. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately known in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touch my clothes? Now think about this. We went back. All these people were thrown in him. You know, people thrown in him, touching him, but he never asked who touched him. Why? This lady touched him with a touch of faith. Many people are calling and praying and crying out to God, but God is not moved unless it's by faith. Okay, let's move. Why do we know that? Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. God is not moved by your need and by your begging and crying and wailing. He's only moved by faith. Okay. It says, but his disciples said to him, now listen to look, 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 his disciples said, look at what they said. They said to him, you see the multitude thrown in you. See, they say, Jesus, all these people touching you and throwing, and you say, who touched me? They kind of like, are you for real? Come on, man. Are you for real? All of these people and you asking who touched me, but they didn't know that Jesus knew somebody touched me with faith. And he looked around to see her who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, because of the power of God working in me, because the day is your day, because the father said is his will. No, that ain't what he said. He said, daughter, your faith, underline your faith. He didn't say it was his faith. He didn't say it was God's will. It wasn't a, a God a specific timing. He said, your faith. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue house who said, your daughter is dead. Now listen to this report. They come into the, the, the ruler of the synagogue. They come into him with an evil report, we could say. Maybe not evil, but that's a dead situation. He said, hey, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any farther? See, this is where people get up. 
Once they heard a diagnosis or once they heard something, they quit. But it's not over until God says it's over. See, they gave up. They say, why keep troubling the master? Your daughter is dead. But look what it goes on. Look at verse 36. It says, as soon as Jesus heard, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, what did he say? Do not be afraid. Only believe. Why is that? That's what some of you need to hear today. Fear is a force. Fear is like faith. Matter of fact, fear is faith. It's faith in the ability of the devil instead of faith in the power of God. That's all fear is. That's why Jesus said, do not be afraid. That's the same thing he's speaking to you today. I don't care what you heard, what the doctors say. Jesus said, look, don't be afraid. If you get into fear, now you're giving over to the force of evil. You having faith in the devil ability instead of faith in God. He said, be not afraid. Do not be afraid. Do what? I, what did he say? Only believe. See, this is where I'm going to stop right here for a minute. See, so many of you get stuck because you're trying to figure it out. You try to figure out, well, how's God's going to do this? What's the? F he never told you to do that. All he told you and I to do is believe. According to your, believe, believe what? Believe the promises of God. All you have to do is believe, according to the word of God, that by Jesus stripes you are healed. He already paid the price. You don't have to figure out how he's going to do it. All God wants you and I to do, do you believe or not? Do you believe I'm able to do this? You believe I'm able to give you a new hip, recreate it, and do, yes, then I need you to go around and tell people, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe, why? Because I believe the word of God. You calling those things to be not. See, some of you say, well, I can't say that. I'm lying. I'm sick. And my, I, I'm sick. And see, well, you're going to keep getting sickness. You call those things to be not as though they were. Healing is something that's already promised to you. But it's not going to come to pass and it won't be manifested in your life until you speak in your life, until you speak it out of your mouth. Why? That's the way God set up the system. If you don't want the dog... OK. Then don't call him. If it's the cat you're looking for, don't say here, doggy, here, doggy. You might get the neighbor doggy. Call the cat. Here, kitty, here, kitty, here, kitty. If it's healing you want, stop calling sickness. I'm sick. I'm sick. No, say come healing, come healing, come healing. I receive healing. Call in the healing. All right. I'm getting wound up already. Let's move on. And now look at this. And he. Jesus, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Sometimes you have to not allow people who are not walking in agreement with you around you when you fighting or challenges with tough and critical, critical situations. Sometimes you might have to tell your family, member, don't call me. I don't want to hear the latest report. I don't want to hear what they said. I don't want to hear about this is a rare disease and nobody knows. I don't want to hear it. Lose my number right now. I just want to hear the promises of God that all things are possible to him that believe. And according to my faith, I can be healed. See, sometimes you got to kick out people in your life that ain't going to help you stand and believe God for healing. I know of a testimony of a young lady who was diagnosed with cancer and she said, I don't want to hear about the uh, statistics. I just want I want you to give me all the people who were healed from this disease. And the doctors had to find and they found different people. You know what she did it for? She wanted to find out what they did to beat it. And when she found out, she started learning some things. This is what was amazing. She found out one. This is the biggest thing they all had in common common. They wasn't afraid and they were determined to win. That's what she said. All the people she ended up interviewing and meeting, they had one thing in common. They weren't afraid and they were determined to be healed. Most people they say that die from cancer and other illnesses, they die because of fear. The fear of death. Do you know they say getting, I, don't, I can't prove it, but I heard cancer it's easier for a person to get healed through cancer 
than it is the common cold. But the reason it doesn't happen is because what we hear so much about high is incurable and it's a death disease. All right. Think about that for a while. If people would tell you, if you kept hearing that the common cold is a killer, guess what? People that have faith when they get the common cold to die. That's right. Why? They got faith for what they hear. You keep hearing about how cancer is a killer. And so people, when they get to what they do, the first thing to grip them is fear. I'm going to die. Instead of, oh, glory be to God, another opportunity to see the miraculous power of God and I shall live and not die. I know y'all say you faith people are crazy. That's all right, but we're going to keep living in health and keep living whole. Okay, let's keep moving on here. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a turmoil and those who wept and wailed loudly. I don't know if you've ever been to a funeral where more people can carry on. They put a show on. They, they just act. My wife used to, y'all, most of you know, my wife is a little lighter than me. So when we go in, you know, they write names. They say, you know, they say I'm black. I, I, if I prefer it, I just put chocolate because I'm not black. I'm chocolate, real good chocolate. Look at it. And dark chocolate. And then my wife, they say, she, she do stuff, they got to say, okay, you white. Now they ask me, are you Hispanic or non-Hispanic? Are you white or non-white? I said, man, you don't give me too many choices left. So you get it down, are you black or African-American? I say, neither, Christian. That's what I want to say. But so my wife is a little lighter than me. Some of you know that she's a little lighter than me. So she never experienced some funerals like I have. And I told her when she first went to some funerals, we used to watch some movies, and we'd be watching these black uh, funerals. She'd be wondering why I'm laughing. She couldn't understand. Well, I'm watching this movie, and I'm just rolling tears in my eye until she experienced some. Once she experienced... She, she understood why I laugh because she never seen the show until see, people don't know until they go to the show to see it. Uh, don't get mad with me, but it's a show. Most of the time it's a show. All right. And most of it's a show of sorrow and grief, because if you really believe what you really say, how that person loved the Lord, you'll be rejoicing. You wouldn't be grieving. You'd be rejoicing. Oh, glory. They gone on. Because Paul said to live is for Christ and to die is a gain. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep moving. I'll leave that alone. So, but these people was like many of the funerals I've been to. Boy, people just put on a show. Don't get offended. If you're getting offended, you know what they say. You throw a rock in a pile of dogs. The only one yell is the dog to get hit. So if you get hit, if you yelling and upset, that's because the rock hit you. All right, let's move on. It says, when he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. See, when you make a statement about that it's God's will for people to be healed, they ridicule you too. They get upset with us, us so-called faith preachers and teachers because we say we believe God wants people to be healed and we lay hands on them and they get healed. And they go, well, you pray for so-and-so and they die. I say, how many people go to the hospital every day and die? You don't get mad at them. You don't shut them down. You don't criticize them. All right, see, just making you think. You don't get upset with the doctors. They did surgery. They did everything they could, and the people still die. But a preacher pray for somebody. They believe God, and they die. See, you preachers, y'all are fake. You're phony. Why you don't say the doctor's fake and phony? Why you ain't protesting to close the hospital down, all the people that die there every day they go? We just choose to believe God wants them well. We're not practicing. We're letting God do the healing. Okay, let's move on. Just making you think a little bit. Just making you think. And it says, and they ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, see, boy, sometimes you just got to put everybody out. He put them all outside. He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and into where the child was laying. Then he took the child by, by the hand and said to her, Tablifa Kamun. Which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. I, I, that's why I keep telling you, you get up out of that bed, you get out of that wheelchair, them blind eyes open, your ears open, people are going to be of great amazement. But I'm here to tell you, that's what God is here to do. He's here still to stun the world. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it. 
and said that something should be given her to eat. Oh, glory. This is so much. So full. Now, let's go back to this lady with the issue of blood. This is what I want you to see first. Look, go back to verse 25. Verse 25 says, now a certain woman. It ain't talking about any woman. It's talking about a certain woman. And they're going to describe to you and I, this woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And let me say this, boy, I just thought about this when I was getting ready tonight. The spirit of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me as I was meditating on the word and just listening to some stuff. The word of the Lord said, this is what the Lord said to me. I want you to let people know that when I do something, I don't do a patch up job. Watch this. He said, I make all things new. Oh, hallelujah. As that was shouting the ground right there. God, do not look. When God comes in, when, look, that's like when you get born again. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. When a man or woman get born again, listen what it says. If any man be in Christ, watch this. He is a new creature, a new creation. See, you are completely new. Your spirit man is completely new. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. What? You are new. Your spirit man is new. You become new. Why? God came in. You are new. And now the only thing you fight with from that moment for, forward is the renewing of your mind. The devil wants to bring up old things and your old flesh. Your flesh wants to bring up the old you. But you knew. Uh, watch this. And now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. <coughs> Excuse me. When she heard about Jesus, what do we say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. She heard about this man, Jesus. That's why she knew if I could just get to him. What? She must have heard this man was healing people, working miracles, and she knew if I just could get to Jesus. I don't know where you at tonight. You got to make up in your mind. I just need to get to Jesus. I just need to get that word in me. I just need to hear him. And it says, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, now watch what she said. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now I want you to hold right there, and I want you to go over to Romans because I want you to see a pattern. God doesn't do anything outside of his spiritual laws. Watch the pattern. Go to Romans chapter 10 and look at verses 9 and 10. Oh, I love this word. I was talking to a friend today who I grew up with and helped lead me to the Lord. How thankful I am. I don't even know how it happened. I think it was from her and another lady. Uh, I used to, this is before eight, this is BC's before Christ. I used to get high and I would go and talk to them about the Bible. And I just, cause I, I was curious. I was like Nicodemus. I would get high and at night I sneak up to their house and I talk about the Bible, fall asleep talking about the Bible. And, and cause I grew up in a traditional AME church, but something was different about them. All of a sudden, they talking about Jesus. They talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. And then they start talking this faith stuff. And I'm like, what is this? What you talking about? I thought they were crazy. I thought they were losing their mind. But when I heard it, something inside of me leaped. I was happy. And then when I got saved, when I went in the Army, before I went in the Army, I got saved, went in the Army, came home. They were turned on to this, what they call the word of faith. And I was introduced by then to Kenneth Copeland, Fred Price. Never look. Man, I was telling her today, I said, I am so glad. Oh, my God. I don't care about all of y'all who say, you know, I'm, I want something new. I, I'm trying to perfect this old that I know. I'm trying to perfect the fundamentals that I've learned from them. But I am so glad I was introduced to the word of faith. I am so glad I was introduced and we were talking. I'm, I'm being honest. See, when I tell you I feel like I'm God's favorite, I look and say, God, why did you, why did you point us out to learn this? 
all the people I grew up around and people I know, it was like he took a few of us and we and we got a hold of it. And we and it's not no put down. We still have family members and friends and people we know. They still don't want no part of it. And I just look like all you got to do is look at my life. There's evidence. Came out of the same neighborhood, went to the same schools, and this ain't to put nobody down. But look at my life. And look, what is it? That word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can go chase something else you want if you want. I'm chasing this word. And look at this over in Romans 10, 9 and 10. This is, one of the fund this is a fundamental principle. This is the basic. In Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it says this. That if, you will, if, that if you confess with your mouth, what did he say you had to do? Confess, confess what? With what? He said if you will confess with your mouth. See, look, let me help all you Christians out. You have to confess with your mouth. You may not like it, but the Bible says you have to confess with your mouth. That if you should confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and do what? And believe in your heart. That God has raised him from the dead. What should happen? You will be saved. And then it says, for with the heart one believeth unto righteousness. And then what? And with the mouth, what happens? With the what? Mouth. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. See, a lot of you think, well, I just think on it. I just believe it. And No, no. God says with the confession of your mouth. It says, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That word salvation is so-so. With the mouth, confession is made unto healing. Part one of the things of so-so was healing. It was deliverance. It was sound mind. But one of them is healing. With the mouth, confession is made unto healing. Now let's go back. Keep your place because we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this, Romans, but look at, look at uh, Mark 5, okay? And look at verse 28, it says, for she said, so you need to underline that, for she said, oh glory, for she said, for she said, for she said, what did she do? <clears throat> she made a confession with her mouth. <clears throat> and if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, <clears throat> you shall be saved. <clears throat> <clears throat> now look at this. It says, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes. What did she say? I shall be made well, I will be made. I shall be. She's saying, if I can touch a shoe, what? Who did this? She made a confession with her mouth. That's the law of God. If you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. She, and then look what it says. Immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up as she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, I want to ask you this. What caused her to get healed? I know many of you say it was the power of God. No, it was the confession that she made with her mouth. You will never get above the confession of your mouth. Your mouth. I heard people, well, I don't believe that. I don't, well, stay sick. And look, look, I don't want to sound rude, then die. Because that's where you're on your way to. You don't want to do this confession stuff with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's the way God set up the system. You couldn't even have gotten saved. You can't even be born again unless you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's the fundamental principle of this gospel. You have to confess with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart. And the Bible says, if you do that, you shall be saved. Now, I didn't get this scripture to him, but in, in, in Romans 10, 13, it says this. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall 
be saved. That's the Bible. If you want healing, you call on the name of the Lord. You call on Jesus. What is that? His word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. See, when you're calling on Jesus, you're calling on God's word. And he says that with the mouth, with the mouth, look at it, let's go over here, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believeth unto righteousness, and with what? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Oh, glory be to God. And then look what it says after this. And Jesus immediately known in himself. See, he knew. God knows when somebody touched him by faith. For Jesus immediately known in himself that power. Faith is what activates the power of God. You can say, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Listen, faith is the substance of things hoped for. But hope is not going to do anything unless you put some faith with it. You can hope for a better day, but until you confess and believe God that you're going to have a better day, hope is going to go down. But faith will keep you afloat. Faith, will, and that is what activates it. It's like you take hope over here and you got your manifestation over here. Faith comes in the middle and connects them together. It's like the charging power. It acts the rate, the hope to get you to what it is you're believing for. See, I can keep hoping that I, I, I believe I'm healed and have a new hip, but until I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that I'm already healed, it will never activate it. How many of you understand that? See, I can keep hoping. I can keep hoping. And Jesus say, what are you hoping for, Raina? I'm hoping to be totally and completely healed. I'm hoping, I believe, I say I have a new hip. I say my body is totally healed. I say I'm healed from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I say everything in my body function and operate properly the way you created the function. You are repairing, you are replacing everything in my body that needs to be repaired and replaced. And I believe that the Lord is the strip of my life. Until I'm willing to confess that, believe that, and be fully persuaded, I will never see the manifestation. And that's the same thing you have to do. Oh, yeah, Lord, I say that. There's some of you, you may have had parts you lost or things damaged. I have good news for you tonight. God can repair it. Not only can he repair it, he can recreate it. He's the creator. God can give you a new liver. He can give you a new kidney. I, Lord, I tell that testimony. I was in Germany. I went back then. It was called West Germany. I was in the army. There was this young couple. They were in the navy, and uh, the wife was believing God for a baby. She had a baby, but they told her she couldn't have a baby. You know why? She had a hysterectomy. She had to have a hysterectomy, and they said no way. And she said. We said, what? She said, I want to believe God for a miracle. But it's something when you're young in Christ. <laughs> we were young believers. We said, well, let's pray. Let's believe God. I'm here to testify to you. She has another baby. Why? Faith. Trust and believe in God. Trust and believe in God. How did that happen? I don't know. I don't care. We just took our faith. See, I was that type. Well, we were like, let's do it. Let's believe God. Let's do it. And we got together with some other believers. We prayed. Next thing you know, she's pregnant and had another child. The husband was happy. She was happy. Simple faith. She said, they said, I can't have a baby, but I want to believe God. She had another child. We, the, me and my wife, we had prayed with people in our church who they told ladies they wouldn't have babies. They'd never have babies. One time we had baby after baby after baby, people getting pregnant. Where they said they couldn't. Baby after baby after baby. God. Why? Faith in God. Mm. We said, do you believe, do you want a child? They said, yes. Yeah. Do you believe God wants you to have a child? We said, yeah. But they said, no, I can't. who said you can't? I said, I don't believe God. Do your husband want a child? Yeah. Lord, let's pray and believe God. 
Now listen, if you're not married, don't ask for it. You have to be married first. No, at least that's what God wants. Now, if you're not married, praise the Lord. But if you're not married, we're not praying for you to have a baby with some guy out there. We, this is for married folks. There's certain things that it promises. We want, yeah, married to his wife, not people married and want it with somebody else with Billy Bob with your husband. Amen. Just got to make that straight sometime. But look what it says. Let's go. I'm just trying to build your faith up. I don't know where y'all at. See, I, I don't know why I keep sensing there's people who, who, who struggling with walking or need healing. And they told you ain't nothing they can do. Jesus can heal you. All he wants you to do is start believing him. If you can't stand up, stand up on the inside. Start seeing yourself up. Start seeing yourself will. Will, uh, heal. Start seeing yourself up out of that bed. Start seeing yourself out of that wheelchair. But I'm here to tell you, faith not going to come unless you start hearing it. I was thinking about this today. I, 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 I was early today. I was meditating. had to go take my car to get my oil change and all that. And I was just reading a book by Kenneth Hagin. I was just thinking about the word. And the word, the word of the Lord, I heard the Lord say to me, see, faith can't come where the will of God is not known. And this is the danger part. This is what I sense the Lord was saying to me. See, when people don't hear that it's God's will for them to be healed or God's will for them to be debt free or God's will for them to prosper, you can't have faith for it. There's nothing you have to fight about. You don't have to get upset with people. You don't have to be mad at people. I never knew you could live debt free until I heard the revelation knowledge of God's word on it. Yeah, we, we heard it before, like my wife said, but we didn't hear. You hear, but you don't hear. And that's what a lot of time, a lot of people do in church. They hear, but they don't hear. Until you hear that word, that seed, that everlasting, that incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. Until you, uh, you purposely, attentively hear that word that God wants me healed, all of a sudden you start fighting towards that healing. And let me say this, God already sees you whole. He already sees you healed. That's why we say once you make a decision, I'm going to be debt free. God will start bringing revelation knowledge. He'll bring creative ideas. He'll bring supernatural ways. Before you know it, you debt free. And, and, and time ago, but you go, how did I get here? I don't know. I start hearing the word. I start believing it. And now I'm debt free. Really? Oh, baby, we can't explain all the formula. You just start believing God. All he told me to do is believe him. We start believing him. He started directing us. He started telling us where to give, where to sow, and wham, before you know it, you're debt free. That's the same way healing. The principles all work the same, but it never happened until you start hearing the word on it. Until you start her, you'll never get up and be healed until you know that you know that you know it's God's will for you to be healed. And how does faith come? By hearing. And as soon as you hear something that's contrary, sometimes you hear it from other believers. People have been talking to me, they don't mean no harm. Right now, why don't you go do, no, I don't want to hear that, I'm believing God. Why don't you just go get the surgery and do that? I know I can do that, but I want to believe God. That's all. Why? Because I want to exercise my muscles in faith. It's not causing life or death to me. I just want to believe God. And you know that you know when it's totally manifested, oh, you think, oh, come on now, come on, think with me for a minute. Boy, you know the devil is in trouble. Come on, are you with me? And that's all. We just keep standing. We keep believing God. Why? I'm just fighting. There's days I get up and my leg be like, don't even get up. Don't even walk. Screaming. I said, no. I say I'm healed in Jesus' name. I said I'm healed in Jesus' name. I say every step I take, the healing is flowing through my body, driving out every sickness, every disease, germ, every pain. I say I'm healed. Why? The Bible says you should the just your walk by faith. <laughs> and I'll be walking by faith. We were down in Texas walking all around that stockyard and all of that. My wife ain't never heard me complain. My friends ain't never heard me complain. Sometimes you okay. Yep, I'm okay. Let's keep going. Why? I'm walking by faith and not by sight and definitely not by what I feel. Hey. Amen. 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 When my wife, we go somewhere, she want to go swimming. Let's go, girl. She thinks I'm a dolphin. I'll be swimming in that water. Sometimes I try to run. I can't run as fast, but I say, I, I, say, I can't do that part. I just do what I can do. I might jog a little, but I swim. I do everything possible to do. It's a statement to the devil. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed 
in Jesus' name. I'm a healed man. God already said it, I am. And I believe I'm healed right now. And now watch this. Let's, let's wind this up. Ooh, glory. I, I sense the presence of the Lord. Glory. And then it says this, verse 30. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, now Jesus questioning. He said, who touched me? Who touched, who touched my clothes? See, he knew. Now watch the disciples. This is the kind of funny when you think about it. Because these boys are hot. They out there in the desert. We were in Texas. What day was it? 107 on Friday? 106 on Friday. We walking around in that heat in Texas. We was in shorts. That ain't no dust blowing it, but it was hot. The wind would blow and it felt like heat. I'm like, glory be to God. And we come back in Seattle. It's in the 90s. Now it's in the 80s. And it feels like, whoo. But we get a cool breeze every now and then off the water. Texas, you ain't getting no breeze but hot air. Hot. Late at night, we come out of the convention center, 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and the air hot. Hot, 100, 100 degrees still. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. Now, I just want you to see the picture here. And his disciples said to him, Jesus, look, they, this said, you read it, you see the multitude, you know them boys, they were hot. Look, let me just share it for me. I know how I get when it gets hot. Real. Baby, are you for real? Do what? Girl, you better come on, get over, find this shade on this other side. Let's cross the street, find some shade, get to where we going and get back. I, that's just me. Can you imagine these boys dating out there with the multitudes out there? And they like the multitude thrown in you. They say, you see the multitude thrown in you, thrown in you. They not being nice. They taught hot. And you say, who? touch me otherwise they say Jesus are you for real all of these people bumping up against you we try to give you some room to get some air and you want to know who touched you these were some rough boys they were fishermen they wasn't just choir boys they rough boys Jesus you want to know who touched you and look what Jesus said and he looked around to see her who had done this thing why he knew he knew somebody touched him by faith. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Now watch this. I want you to pause. Remember I said don't forget about Jairus? Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue. By law, he had the right to tell people to stone her. Uh-huh. See, we... He was a ruler of the synagogue. This woman has no business being out. So she's fearing and trembling because she knows I'm not supposed to be out. And out of all people, you traveling along with Jairus who has the right to, to condemn me to death. So this lady is afraid, not just because of Jesus. She's afraid, man, what Jairus is right there. I'm not supposed to be here. Now watch this, what he does. And he said to her, daughter, because the power of God is in me, because of uh, the authority that's been given to me, because of uh, I pray that it's the Father's will. No. no. He said, daughter, your faith. Who faith? Her faith. He said, your faith. Now watch this. Has made you well. Now in the King James. I love how it says in the King James. In the King James. It says your faith. Had made you whole. You know what it means to be made whole. Let, let me go over here to Amplified. You got that in the Amplified Glenn. Look over here in the Amplified. In Mark 5 and 30, uh, 34. It says this. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your treat from your distressing bodily disease. Now, why is that important? When he told this woman, you have been made whole, everything she lost was restored back to her. Even everything she paid the doctors for. 
To be made whole is not just your healing, but to regain everything that you lost. That's why the devil, God says that whatever the devil meant for evil, I turn back to good. Remember, he said, I restore back to you everything that the canker worm has eaten up. Everything it has cost you, everything you have lost, everything in your wages, maybe not being able to work, not being able to function. God said, I will make you whole. I restore back to you everything you lost all oh, glory he's a healer he don't just heals your body he heals everything that you lost too if you would believe him that's what he did to this woman for her to be made whole she if she go back heal she lost everything no jesus said you've been made whole your faith has been made you whole now don't ask me how he paid her back or what happened I believe she was restored back to wholeness, health in every area of her life. Why? Because you know and I know that's the way God works. All you got to do is see the nature of God, the pattern of God. He don't just heal you. He give you back everything you lost too. Go, go read it. Read it in the Bible. Every time God did something, he restored them. He restored them. And he'll do the same for you if you believe him. God will do the same thing. He, he'll do the same thing. You say, where you get this from? Okay, let's take the prodigal son. We talked about the prodigal son. He spent his inheritance. When he spent his inheritance, watch this. God said, put the robe on him. What was the robe for? To show him that he's still my son. And then he said, put the sandal on his feet. What is that? To let him know everything I have is his. And he said, put a ring on his finger. That was a ring of authority and kingship. He gave him back everything. He lost everything, but God restored it all back, put it right back in his proper place. Now watch what the other son said. The other son said, why are you doing all of this? I've been here with you the whole time. And Jesus said, everything I have is yours. That's what happened with some of us in the church. We get upset. Other people come in, they get healed, they get blessed. And we go, why God's doing that? You in the house. Everything I have is yours. Healing is yours. Oh, glory. Healing is yours. Everything he has is yours. Everything. Everything. Everything he has is yours. If you in the house, it's yours. If you're not in the house, come on in and give it. My father give you everything too. That's why healing, man, that's why I tell you, healing is the dinner bell to everybody. God doesn't dis discriminate. I don't care if you sinner, non-sinner. That's why I tell people, Jesus wants to heal. I don't care who you are. Jesus wants to heal people. You ain't got to come to church. That's religious stuff. You ain't got to belong to a church. You ain't got to even know nothing about church. All you got to do is believe that God wants you well, and he'll heal you. He'll heal. After he heal you, I guarantee you, you'll serve him. I guarantee you, you look at all through the Bible. Every time people heal Jesus, they followed him. And that's the same thing today. Boy, if we could get churches to start preaching and tell people that God wants them healed. That Jesus died for you to be well. Instead of telling them that Jesus wants you sick. I know this. I have no doubt. Never been told, but I have no doubt. I have family members. I know it in my heart because I had family members that died young. You know, my uh, grandmother and uh, uh, my mother. But I was older, but I'm talking about my grandmother with my mom. There were kids, and, and then some of their other, you know, extended family members, uncles and family members from certain bloodline. Family members died young. I didn't even know all of them. But I know it. I know without a doubt. I don't know if my family watching tonight, but I know some of them been wounded. Some of them don't want nothing to do with God because they believe God took their mother or God took their fathers and stuff. That's a lie. It was the devil. And we had preachers tell them. I, I wasn't there because I wasn't born there, but I know it was preachers because we grew up with it. Preachers tell them, God, you know, God works in a mysterious way. God needed another angel. And that little child sitting there, wounded and hurt. If God is like that, I don't want to serve God. God took my father from me. God took my mother from me. If that's, if that's God, I don't want to. And see what they did. They made a vow in their heart 
They made a, they, they made a, 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 how you want to say, they made a, a decree in their heart. They, they were mad at God. And nothing can break that but the truth. They need to know. If my family watching us, you need to know. It wasn't God that took mama, took grandmama. It was the devil. Maybe they didn't know some things, but God never. What kind of God is that to take your mother from you? What kind of God is that to take your father from you? To let people struggle. Maybe they didn't know some things and maybe we didn't know some things, but I know it wasn't God. Why? Because the Bible says the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus came that you may have life and have it more. But maybe you never heard that and maybe you never know it. But if you're watching me tonight, I want you to know Jesus is not the killer. It's the devil. And yeah, maybe we didn't know some things and maybe we didn't understand some things. But I'm here to tell you that wasn't God. There's a bad devil out there. He's evil. He is not taking people mothers. He is not taking your kids. He is not taking your parents, your grandparents. I mean, when they get older and satisfied, that's one thing. But when they young and got little ones, that's the devil. That's the devil. God didn't make your parents cripple. If there's somebody in there and you cripple, you got some kind of sickness. That is not God. That's a lie. God didn't put that on you. God didn't put that on you to humble you, to take you away from, from your husband or your children or from your, your wife and your kids where you ain't able to function and you ain't able to take care of them. That's the devil trying to kill you, trying to destroy you trying to keep you away from your family, enjoying life with your family. It is not God. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus is a healer. The Bible, I'm going to finish with this. I didn't give this scripture, but I'm going to give this scripture. Go over to Acts. The Lord's quicken this to me. I didn't give this to him tonight, but I want you to see this scripture. Over in Acts, hallelujah, 10 I think that's where I want to go, 10 and 38. Look at this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. New King James, because I don't have the King James with me. You might have it there, baby. It says this. Uh, help me, Lord, if I'm in the right place. It says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested. Where am I met, baby? Help me. For this purpose... Where, 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 where we at here? Yeah, verse 38. It says, how, no, verse 38, it says this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. How many did he heal? Healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Did you find that? Other, look up that other scripture. Said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Where is that at, Lord? Is that in uh, James? Help me, Holy Spirit. Shiki the Roko. Is that in uh, First John? But but these two scriptures. Okay, First John. I said that. But look at this. I want you to see this one in Acts first. It says, uh, Acts ten thirty. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. And with power, who went about doing good. What did he do? He went about doing good. And healing how many? All. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God. So if God healed them, that let you know it's the oppression of the devil. And then look at, look at 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and 8. We're going to close with this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, it's the word. It's the word, you guys. It's the word that'll heal you. The word. You have to get the. You have to get a hold of it. Look at this. In First John. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. First John three and eight. I didn't give each of these guys. This just came up out of my spirit. The Lord. First John three eight. It says this. He who sins, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, all right, here you go. I want you to hear this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Why? That he might destroy 
the works of the devil. That word destroy is to, sm uh, is to smash like patter. You know how you take a rock or something, you crush it, and then it's just nothing but dirt and sand. Dust. That's what God did. He came to destroy. He came to smash the devil like patter, to sift him like patter. For this purpose, oh glory, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, what, what's the works of the devil? Huh? Sickness and disease. It's the works of the devil. If you guys were around when we taught 30 reasons why it's God's will for you to be healed. In the beginning, sickness wasn't there. Jesus said, the Bible says, God said, everything I've done is good. And then he got to what he got to. He said, it's very good. I want to ask you this. Is cancer good? Mm. Is arthritis good? No. Is blindness mm. good? Is crippleness good? Is death good? See, they all enemies of God. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And I'm here tonight to tell you, God wants you well. Why? Because Jesus, that's his purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray for every person that's under the sound of my voice, every person that's watching, tuning in tonight, every person that's going to watch this episode later on, we pray healing over them. We come against the Satan. We come against the devil. We come against every sickness, every disease germ, every virus, every pain. We come against you right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to be healed. We command you to be whole. We say be healed in Jesus name. We come, Jesus in us, we come to destroy the works of the enemy. And Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Well, hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Whew, man, it just keeps getting better and better. Better and better, gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Just want to tell you, look, that God loves you. He really does. And he wants to heal you. He wants you to be healed. Amen. So don't forget to tune in with us on Sunday. We, 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 we teaching on uh, co completed, I mean, a total commitment to the word of God. And that's getting better. I tell you, I, I just say this, I, I'm not boasting, but I'm going to tell you, God is helping me to get better at this stuff. I tell you, every time I, I can sense that God is my helper. He is helping me. He is helping us. And I'm telling you, you want to be a part of that. And then on Sunday afternoon, we teach on biblical prosperity and success. I am so, I am so more determined to teach us now like ever before because God wants you blessed. Listen, you got to get to the place where you believe God for your finances. You see that world system is crumbling. And let me help you out. It's going to continue to crumble. This world system, it ain't, it ain't standing on nothing. That Babylonian system is crumbling and it's going to continue to crumble. But I got good news for you. The kingdom of God is never going down. The kingdom of God. The principles of God. So join us on Sunday afternoon so you can learn about your finances. And, how, and look, how to continue to prosper in these crazy times. Amen. All right. So look, we love you. Appreciate you. Remember this, that God is exalted. Satan is defeated. And Jesus is Lord. P-O-H. Peace out, homies. Homies. See y'all on Sunday. God bless you. Bye. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah.